Um, this may be a struggle. Okay. This doesn't feel like it works. I got Okay. Okay. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to A Great Alternative. In today's video, month of July, we're at Glassbren again, uh, and we're gonna go through the agroecological permaculture market garden, that is Glassbren, um, what it looks like in this month. Abel's gonna take you through that, and I'm gonna get out the way. Or I could just stay here. Should I just stay here for the whole time? <laughs> no, okay, all right, okay. Welcome back to the garden. It's July, um, and it's finally rained. So last month we talked all about water resilience, we talked about how dry it is and the drought conditions we've been experiencing. And that really has continued just till the last three or four days really. We've had little, little pockets of rain, little bits of drizzle, but nothing significant until the last three days. And finally, heaven's open for three days solid. We filled up the tanks, the, the land feels quenched finally. My shoulders can drop, we can relax and stop worrying about water for a little while. And everything's full in the garden, everything's planted out. We're just about ready to start planting out our second spring plants, so our brassicas that are gonna go through to autumn or even carry on through to winter. And we're harvesting cucumbers, we're harvesting courgettes and summer squash. Broad beans are coming out. It's really starting to kick off now the harvest season. And we're looking forward to things like the sweet corn, the tomatoes arriving, and yeah, just the real fullness when the aubergines, the chilies, the peppers, the, all the outdoor crops start to really produce just in a couple of weeks time. And so every month we have a theme that we cover in one of these videos and this month because today is a volunteer day here on the land we're going to talk about volunteers so volunteering is a really incredible access point to food growing permaculture, getting involved in general land work, land skills, regenerative skills. It's a really easy way for, for you to start learning those skills gently, shadowing someone who's doing it, learning from how they're doing it. It's how I started out really with, with things like woofing and help exchange. So we invite day volunteers here at Glassbrenn. So we have a volunteer day every day, usually a Thursday. And people come from around 9.30 till around three and we spend the day doing various tasks that are pressing at that time. So we try to offer a real variety of things. So it's not all just hard physical labor. It's a mix of, of wheelbarrowing or seed sowing or planting or harvesting. It's a really varied experience and we're really keen to get across to people that uh, there's really a culture of no duress here. So it's not about coming here and your productivity rate. It's about coming here, however you are, whoever you are and wherever you're at on that day. Um, and finding here what, what it is that serves you. So we're, we're really trying to shape our volunteer experience around creating a culture and an atmosphere that's really welcoming and safe and inclusive and making sure people are rewarded for what they, what they offer. So we give a free lunch, uh, organic lunch from the land. We give our volunteers a free veg box in exchange for a day's volunteering. So it's a really great way to learn new skills, to meet new people, to kind of make connections with people of like heart and like mind and yeah, to start build kind of an authentic community around a shared purpose, which is growing food, which is something that's key and critical to all of our lives day to day, three times a day. Um, so it feels like a really nice basis to build a community around. And that's been our experience really. And we've made long-term connections with a lot of our volunteers and we've become, you know, a little community the way. It feels like it's an important part of people's lives and it really feels like there's an exchange going on. It's not just that people are helping us out. There's a two-way kind of uh, benefit system that's going on. Yeah, and volunteering can be a really powerful um, tool to help you build mental health and well-being. So it's, you know, we all know that being in green space, being in nature and gardening are proven to be really good for our mental health. But I think there's also another element, which is purpose, having a purpose that's shared with a community of people where you feel welcome and where you feel safe. And that's an element maybe that we don't talk about enough around mental health is that mental health and well-being doesn't have to be an individual pursuit. You know, we can try to build it all together as, as we try to build health and well-being of the soil, of the environment, of the planet. There's this great quote from Robin Wall Kimmerer that goes something like, as we work to heal the earth, the earth heals us. And that's really what our volunteer programs are based on, is that we're all working together with this regenerative purpose to restore land, restore ecosystems and grow food for our community. And at the same time, we're all getting healed as individuals and as a collective. 
by doing that. And we're so, we're so indebted to our volunteers. This project, this garden, everything that Glassburn does wouldn't exist without our volunteers and without people's willingness to help. I'm lucky enough to see that on a regular basis and see that impulse in people, but also see how it helps them in return. So there's, yeah, it's always got to be this two-way thing and that's really important. If anybody's thinking of starting a volunteer program or introducing volunteers to your farm or your project, it's got to be a two-way thing. You can't just see it as free labor or a way to get around employing people. It's not about that. It's about creating an experience, facilitating a safe space and giving people benefits and rewards for their contribution and trying to make sure that it's an exchange, that it's, it's something that's going two ways. It's quite a magnet to come here. A friend of mine introduced me. She's living in a neighboring village. So we travel almost an hour to come here. And uh, it's the people. It's the people that draw me back. It's the kind of like-mindedness in a very light way. And yet we have incredible conversations whilst doing some volunteering. What do you think you get out of volunteering and coming here and being part of a project like this? It sounds big, but it has a big healing aspect. Like you step out of your routine. I'm usually taking my children here. So they are a day off school. We come here, we're just together. So by working, there are this, this quality of conversations are happening. You're not sitting opposite each other. You're not sitting in a circle. You're just standing there and the conversations just evolve or not. So it's very light and you can be as you are, like come as you are and the land holds. The land holds a lot. The land holds a lot. Bringing your children, and what do you think they get out of coming and volunteering and spending the day with you? Especially now that Merlin's joined us. <laughs> yeah, what are they getting out of it? Um, actually, I don't know. I don't know. I can only assume that they get the connection to the land, they get a connection to the joy of working together, they get a connection to the people here who are all really, really there's such a light holding of the children. Everyone kind of has an eye together. It's a real, feels like we're forming a really tiny village in, in, in no time. Like every Thursday we arrive and they're children and there's just like an awareness of them and we're tracking them. I have big trust that this is a really good school. <laughs> Amazing, I definitely, definitely agree. There's so much that you can, that can be learned from hey, a space like this. Filming? We are filming, we're filming over there. Can you see the camera from here? Yeah. So we were filming. You might have to shout loud uh, because we've not got a microphone on you. But what's your favourite bit about coming to uh, volunteer here? Mummy. Yeah. Okay. Well, time with mummy. That's perfectly great answer. What did you do with Abel today? Drive a truck. <gasps> <gasps> Drive a truck. Amazing. Wow. So overall, then, what kind of means the most to you about being? coming here, volunteering, spending time with other people and, and the land itself. It's to know that this is just here. It's not an agreement. It's nothing that you feel bad if you can't do it. If you don't make it, I feel sad, but not like I've let anyone down. I feel sad to not make it because I can't make it for myself. And you're not made to feel guilty no, by the such a relaxed, club leader. Yes, yeah. it's such a relaxed atmosphere where you can work slowly, you can work fast, you can work slowly, you can work beautifully. So there's no push. Um, so my, yeah, my favorite thing is to just know that it's here. And I'm so grateful to Abel and Louisa and everyone who's just keeping this going so that you can join. It's so nice to not hold it together. Okay, Q and A section to the video. First question comes from Shyla, one of the volunteers from today. And it is, for yourself, what is the most inspiring permaculture principle? Oh, what a question, Shyla. Ooh, boy. God, that's really hard. Um, okay, I'm gonna choose two. I don't know if they're the most inspiring, but they are two that I feel quite, have, have cropped up quite a lot in, in my life sort of building a permaculture garden built and a permaculture project and one is um, number one observe and interact 
observe and interact. So yeah, this importance of observation, pausing, taking time uh, to be on the, on, you know, particularly if it's a land project that you're doing to take time to be on the land, observe it through the seasons, through the cycles, observe the patterns, observe how wild energies move through it, whether it's uh, where the wind blows, um, where the sun shines, you know, observing the wet patches and the dry patches, getting your shoes off, getting your bare feet in the soil, um, sitting down, making notes, writing in your journal. Um, yeah, just really taking time to feel the space and observe it and understand it. Um, and then just gently starting to interact with it before you go in there and make your big changes. Um, I think that's advice I would always give someone starting any kind of garden or farm or um, any project like that. And the other one is accept uh, self-regulation Accept, no, sorry, accept feedback and apply self-regulation. So this is all about um, kind of mimicking the forest, like the one we're in now, where there's certain feedback mechanisms that an ecosystem can give you um, to sort of tell you where things need to change <clears throat> or where resources need to be moved or redirected. Um, and a garden or a farm or a permaculture landscape is always giving us those feedback me mechanisms. But as modern humans, we're not always tuned in to hearing them or seeing them or or listening so it's really important to see where the feedback's coming and then regulate um, your system to to be resilient and adaptable and you know um, especially in relation to different weather changes climate changes um, and also be aware of your patterns as a per, as a person like what are the what are the patterns that might get in the way of you achieving your your plans um, and how can you self-regulate to be aware of your, your worst tendencies or your most you know limiting tendencies um, and tendencies that might limit your adapt your ability to be adaptable i think is what i'm saying so those two i love all, all of them not just the 12 of i think it's holmgren's 12 and then mollison's got a load and then there's a load of other ones there's loads of great permaculture principles but though, yeah for the purposes of your question shyla those are my two favorites and most inspiring yeah excellent next question comes from my beautiful, amazing wife, Alicia. Um, and I think this came off the back of, if you haven't seen it already, I think it's in April or May when you mention this. So everyone out there, if I've been lazy and haven't put on screen now exactly what video it is, go back and have a watch where Abel introduces this subject matter. So she's talking specifically when you mentioned about planting methods and ways of doing the three sisters. Hmm. So. Is there a particular variety of bean that needs to grow with the three sisters method? Because surely would the bean not put, uh, would not outgrow the corn and therefore it would kind of not work as a support um, yep. in that, in, 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 and that's what you mentioned in the past video. Yep. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, a very good question. And uh, in this climate, so we're in Wales here, West Wales, um, and generally I would say probably in a British climate, um, the three sisters as it is in its truest form, you know, with corn, squash and climbing beans um, is very difficult to achieve. I've never achieved it in its fullness because of exactly the problem that you raise, which is that oftentimes the corn, particularly in an outside setting, um, doesn't grow high enough or strong enough to support a bean, a climbing bean. So they do get smothered. Um, so. You know, if you were growing, like for example, you'll probably see in some of the B-roll of this video that we're growing corn inside this year. And so I think it would work in that context because the corn's growing much higher. It's mimicking a lot more the actual climate that the corn is really meant for, which is sort of that Central American um, kind of climate. That's where it originated from. So, um, so that's why it works over there, but it doesn't work so well here. But what you can do is adapt it slightly um, to, you could add in bush beans, for example, or you could change up your companion planting so that the nitrogen fixing part role that the bean is doing, you could do with a green manure, for example, like a cover crop, um, like I might use a yellow trefoil around my sweet corn um, to have that nitrogen fixing capacity, which is the role that the beans are playing in that system, which is to feed the other two plants. Obviously, you're, it means you're lacking in that third crop, um, but yeah, we, we have to adapt these systems to our context, and that's a really important principle is is being aware of your context and not just taking something that sounds like a great idea and applying it to, your con to, to what you're doing without understanding whether it's actually relevant for you. Um, so yeah, that's what I would say. If there's anybody out there that's had success with 
with the traditional three sisters in Wales. I'd love to hear about it and I'd love to hear how you've, how you've done that. Um, but yeah, that's my perspective. Excellent. Okay, well, for today, I do have one more question. Okay. I have a feeling it may be a quick response answer. Um, but yeah, so if anyone out there, if you have questions for future videos, um, we haven't had loads, so it's likely that if you put a question down in the comments for either this month or any of the previous months, it's likely that that will be asked in one of the following months coming this year or at the video that I plan to do at the end of the year, which is basically gonna be a full kind of Q&A evaluation of the year, as well as Q&As and interactions with hopefully um, audience out there, people that might be interested. Um, but final question, very important question, comes from Brian at Journeyman. If you don't know, Brian at Journeyman is who I did the video that I will put up for now, uh, one of my favorite projects so far, which is where he made us a custom bushcraft camera bag. Um, so that's Journeyman Handcrafts. Anyway, Brian from Journeyman Handcrafts, very important, insightful, and it's a question that needs to be asked, I think. Wow. Can you juggle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see how that question is really important for this yeah. <laughs> discussion. It's a permaculture debate that I don't think yeah. enough uh, people like I mean, yourself circus have. Skills, circus skills are a prerequisite of being a permaculturalist, it would seem. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so um, luckily for you, Ryan... That's why I keep getting the video of Charles Dowding's backflip tutorials. Charles Dowding on a unicycle. Yeah. Um, who wouldn't <laughs> love to see <laughs> that? <huh? laughs> Charles, next video. <laughs> yeah. Can you do it on a unicycle? Because we know, you know, you've impressed us all now, but let's, let's step it to the next level. Um, so, uh, yeah, luckily for you, Brian, I can juggle, in fact, thanks to my <laughs> Bronze Duke of Edinburgh Award so that means skill. We need to find some... Uh... Luckily, I have three handy river rocks <gasps> luckily we didn't prepare this earlier and I abel did didn't know that i was going to ask him this exact and question i assure you that only i will be harmed in this process okay uh this is tricky sitting down without really hurting myself but let's see what happens i could okay. pick the camera up if you, so you need. ready ready here we go so ooh, let's try that again ready here we go we're juggling rocks what <laughs> did you Duke of Edinburgh. Yeah, I, I did it for my Duke of Edinburgh skill. You have to do a skill for Duke of Edinburgh. Isn't that like firelighting I normally or map reading? It's a skill you that most people would pick. And you, you picked juggling. I picked juggling, yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, and my brother was my teacher. <laughs> right, well, uh, I'm gonna press stop and you're gonna <laughs> teach me how to juggle. So uh, thanks everyone. Um, and. I suppose that's it. Leave a question in the, uh, below. If you're interested in all these videos, please like, share, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And otherwise, we'll see you next month. See you in August. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Right, no, seriously, how do you do I've always you tried. Start by, you start by doing that. You can't look at your hands. You have to look at your hands. One, two. One, two. Sorry. <laughs> I, mean, I wouldn't recommend stones as necessarily the no. first thing that you juggle with. <laughs> nope. Okay. Yep. Nailed. Next. Yeah.